with this coronavirus. The, the great number is in America, Italy, and China. Africa has not registered that number that Melinda Gates purported. That is something that we need to ask ourselves. What is our responsibility as a continent? Africa, we need to teach each other, learn more. What is our responsibility? Because it looks like we don't even know what is our responsibility. Therefore, we always make mistakes because any idea that comes from somebody outside, we follow it. We are always following it and we go through it. At the end, we suffer consequences. For example, corona disease that we have at the moment currently, the whole economy of Africa is locked. This idea of locking the economy came with foreigners. The question is that we're asking, how do you prevent or contain a disease that is airborne? Because it's not about touching each other, it's the wind. One meter each, it will still come to you. And wind, according to nature, we don't know the distance and the, the waves, how the wind moves in this world. There's no way you can control it by blocking borders, by stopping people from moving, by com blocking the economy. No ways. The question that we want to ask is, where is our responsibility? Because as a continent, we were supposed to be having uh, laboratories, having schools, having colleges, having institutes where we can be able to put our responsibilities intact where we'll be able to think, where we'll be able to protect, where we'll be able to think about ourselves and find means and avenues on how we can tackle such type of emergencies. We don't have. But this is the most richest continent in, Af in the world, in the universe. What is it that we are doing? That is that we, we are doing to make sure that we are preserving and protecting our continent. What is it? Nothing at all. When it comes to resources, we are not in control. When it comes to independence, we are not in control. When it comes to uh, decision making, we are not in control. Somebody else is the one who is in control. That is where we have a problem. That is where we have a problem. Therefore, we need to go back to responsibility. What is our responsibility in Africa? We don't have one. Because two days ago, we saw on the news whereby someone in Europe are saying, is saying that coronavirus is going to devastate the whole economy of Africa. And that way it is going to be waking up all leaders of Africa to say, hey, we shouldn't accept that, you shouldn't accept that. Do you mean to say, Africa, we don't have the wisdom to know that this lockdown was going to devastate our economies? Should we wait for somebody to come from Europe, from America, to tell us that our economy is falling? When we closed it with our hands, the power of failing to think, the weakness of not knowing what our responsibilities are. We said before that it is our duty as Africans as humans, to think, to foresee. Other countries are put together, their think tank, our houses that thinks about 100 years to come. They don't have jealous that by then we'll be dead. Because if we are a nation, we are not going to die. It's just a transition. This generation goes, another one comes. It has been like that for centuries. And it always be like that. But those countries where they are elders, sat down and thought on how Africa could be or their countries could be. Today they have got the great walls of China, they have got the great walls of uh, great pyramids of, 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 of uh, Egypt. They had to think we can do the same. The problem is we are too much irresponsible. That brings us to the second topic of stupidity. When you lack responsibility, you are a stupid person. Because you'll never care for yourself. You'll never be able to eat. You'll never be able to dress. If you are to have this thing, somebody else has to come and give to you. 
And that is the case with Africa today. Because for Africa to eat, we have to go and beg from United Nations, from World Health Organization, from rich nations. That's stupidity. For Africa to dress, we need to copy what others are doing. Somebody just decide to design a trousers, we even though whatever fashion it is, in Africa, that is our market, we will buy. Why? Because we believe somebody else should think for us. When it comes to care, when it comes to care, that's why Africa is more stupid, because we don't know how to care for ourselves. Our challenge today, today there are Somalians that are denied citizenship in Kenya, Today, there are Ethiopians who are denied citizenship in South Africa. Today, there are Malawians who are denied citizenship in Malawi, I mean in South Africa, because they are foreigners in the Kusem continent. But Chinese, a number of five million today, they are citizens in, in, in Africa. Now, if our ancestors woke up today, they rise up again. The Ndabaning, King, King, uh, King Shaka Zuru, the Mososhwes, if they walk up and find Chinese with African passports, they'll be surprised. When did the genes of Africa started giving birth to those with a size or type of hair? That is where we have a problem that we are stupid because we don't think. We have left our responsibilities not to work for us. We don't even have them then we have just become a society that is stupid. And when you are stupid, it's worse because all the areas that we, we, we tackled about independence, resources, sovereignty, interests and priorities, they are always handed over to those people who are coming from outside. Today, Africa has got no market that is selling diamonds with the price of an African. Today, Africa don't have a market that knows the price of cobalt. But cobalt is in Africa. Today, Africa do not have a price tag on how much is uranium sold. Why? Because we are stupid nation. We are stupid continent. We don't think our own resources are priced by somebody from outside. And we say we are seeing. It's as good as being a blind nation because we don't see. But these are our responsibilities. These are our priorities that we don't even tackle. <coughs> when a continent is led to be ruled by aliens, you become stupid people. When a continent is failing to protect and, and advance its own interests, we are stupid nation continent. When a continent is vulnerable, we are a stupid continent. When a country is failing to stand on its own, for, for example, Malawi, that's a stupid country. You are failing to stand on your own feet, you are stupid. When a country is living at a mess of donors, you are stupid. Because there's no country that will survive through begging. When you are a country living at the mess of others, you are nothing. And when leaders of a nation or continent are happy to beg and be proud of handouts of others, that's being stupid. Because whoever feeds you is the one that decides what you should do. Whoever gives you support is the person that you have to clap hands for. And when you're clapping hands, he is a dancer. You are the clapper. And that's the most painful part that we are in Africa. If we are to liberate this nation, let us look at our topic today. We need to be responsible citizens, and we must avoid being stupid. And then we'll realize what is our citizenship. That is the most important part that we need to do. Otherwise, Africa is going to be a carpet of others. Africa is just going to make history for America, China, and Europe. Because those are the countries that are getting richer and richer and richer because of Africa. Why? Because we Africans are stupid. We don't have time that we can sit down and be responsible citizens. We don't. I'll give an example. Malawi is one biggest example that has shown how stupid a country can be. Every country has got laid out procedures of laws that are set. 
The laws are on the table. This is how this country will be governed. But because we are a stupid nation, that belief is in the control of others. When the United Nations says not coming to observe elections, when SADC say they are not going to come to observe elections, African Union say the same. Those that think they are leaders, they say that no, these elections must be cancelled, postponed, because the international community say, listen to the word, the international community say, what is the international community about Malawi? Why should the international, international community say something about our livelihoods in the country? That is the part of stupidity that Africa is in. We believe in respecting things that doesn't need respect at all. Do you want to say if European Union don't come to Malawi, if African Union is not coming to Malawi, if SADC is not coming to Malawi, Malawians will never be able to go and vote? They will. And peacefully. Because they will be more responsible this time knowing that it is our case within. We need to do this in a responsible manner so that we don't provoke outside people to say same something. So we are going to go into elections peacefully, credibly, and in a manner that the whole world will be surprised. Can elections be held without the eyes of outsiders? Yes, it's going to happen. The problem that we have is that we undermine ourselves. Lack of responsibility, failure. To handle, to hold ourselves responsible for everything that we do. Now, on the point of uh, postponing elections in Malawi, the government that is in there today, they feel they are the most intelligent people. They can decide for the country, particularly when the international community don't put their voice. They believe that that in elections is illegal because the international community do not agree, do not consent their signature. But I will tell you this, Malawi is beginning to rise up. Malawi is beginning to rise up, to show and to take responsibility of its own. Because in this stupidity that we talked about, we think we are intelligent when the US dollars are coming from outside, giving us. I said in my last uh, public lecture that there's no free lunch. In this world,